All right, I'm going to pick on you again. <laughs> okay. Your star of the show. Oh, hands down, American Pharaoh. Yeah. He's been the star of the last two years as far as works on this on this network. I mean, Bob Baffert said it. He's trained more horses than anybody probably in California in the last 10 years. And I'm not talking about racing, and I'm not talking about triple crown. If you want to take a horse, a video, and throw it to someone and say, OK, go find me a horse, that is what you want to copy. Mm. That's what you want to emulate. The way he moves, the way he looks, the way he covers the grounds. So there's no ifs, ifs, ands, or buts about it. Christina, I mean, someone's got to pick American Pharaoh as the all-star because it's pretty obvious there, but are you thinking outside of him as far as your all-star of the show? He is my all-star, but I did pick another horse just for okay. the purpose of us okay. being able to talk about someone else with a good that. work. And so I went with Keen Ice. I loved the work, and I know we showed it as a comparison against Hard Aces and the dis differences between those two works, but I loved what I saw from this horse, and I think he's completely forgotten. The stars are American Pharaoh Beholder, a lot of people talking about Honor Code, but don't forget about Keen Ice. He could be rolling from off the pace, and I loved what I saw from him in the mornings with his energy, with his drill. I, I think he runs a big race. I would agree Saturday. with that. I think he's coming into the race. He's developing at the right time. He seems to be a second-half three-year-old that are always usually so good this time of the year. He's the only horse to have beaten American Pharaoh in the last year. He's improving at the right time. It's a championship time of year in the fall, not just in horse racing, but in baseball. And Paul LaDuca, who would be your walk-off winner as it relates to the Breeders' Cup here and workouts leading up to it? Well, you know the way I am, Todd. you got to choose a 14-horse field, right, Scott, too? We were talking about this earlier. I'm going to go with the Philly and Mare, excuse me, the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. And I, with the... Uh, a slight second choice to the Philly and Mare Sprint, who I like Wable Abel a little bit in, in, in that race. I like Pure Sensation an awful lot, and this horse draws the one hole in a 14-horse field. The Sun is Sensational. Three for three over the turf course, three for three over this distance as well. And this horse has got good gate speed. If you look down at his PPs, always breaks first, second, or third. It's Clement. Johnny Velasquez going to have to break sharp in a 14-horse field. There is pace, but I think this horse will sit very, very nicely for Velasquez on the rail. Going to need a lot of breaks. The turf course at Keeneland, not as big in a 14-horse field going five and a half furlongs. You're going to need a little bit of luck. Hopefully the pine will be nice and clean for the one pure sensation. I, I'm going Judy the Beauty. I thought that workout was sensational. She gets a much better draw. And she'll get a much better trip than what we saw from her in the TCA. And I think the same can be said for undrafted. One of the things about undrafted that when we were back at Keeneland having a conversation with Wesley Ward, he was happy that he was able to skip that prep race when it was washed off the turf course because he really felt like he would need some more time with undrafted and he would come into the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. So I'm, I'm going heavy Wesley Ward here in 2015, something that worked last year at Santa Anita.